What's up? Welcome back to Burning Gas, and we are back again with the 79 Datsun 620. Today's video, I'm going to be fixing, we're actually installing a new hood. See, the old one is kind of toast. You can see here, you can't, well, you kind of can't see that, I guess. I don't think you can, but there's a, uh, you can see how it's bondoed. Here, paint's peeling. Paints peeling, paints peeling. It, it's in pretty bad shape. You can see where it's cracking here, and this is the bondo cracking. Maybe you can, yeah, you can see that on camera. Cracks in it. That's the bondo cracking. This this hood, when I bought the truck, the previous owner had had it coming apart. The uh, the the sheet. So the hood is this sheet metal here, and then there's metal bracing on the inside, and the two pieces had come apart. So he had just stuck a bunch of screws in here. This was all bent, where someone had obviously wrecked. The, the front end of the truck had been wrecked at some point. So, you can't, or you can kind of see, he had these self-tapping screws here. They were in the hood here, just stuck in. And you can see here it's ripped apart. And here, just to hold it so it doesn't rattle all the time, I've got spray foam. This is just just spray foam in there both sides just to keep it so that it, it works so that it doesn't rattle all the time mm -hmm. but it's time to fix it it's having issues this this piece is coming off it's having issues so I went and I found a new hood well it's it's an OEM it's actually off of a 78 but it's the same hood basically because they use the same hood for numerous years so I have that inside and I, it has some slight surface rust on it and needs painted. So that's what I'm going to be doing today and just kind of show you a, refurber, a, uh, a refurbished process. Just kind of show you the refurbished process on an old piece of sheet metal like that. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the video. Let's go. So here's the hood. As you can see, it's in a sight better shape. It's almost immaculate, honestly. Some slight pitting from the rust but pretty much immaculate is the bottom of it. Again, slight surface rust, we'll need furbished. Uh, I'll probably, I don't know if I'll leave this latch and install my old latch or if I'll just refurbish this latch, either way. But, so, I've got this with a wire brush on the end. So that will is what I'll be using to remove this rust, kind of remove it. It already has had paint remover put on it, so most of the paint has been removed. There's still a little bit there, but I'm just going to hit it with primer. and Well, I'll, I'll, I have to wire brush it, and then I'll hit it with primer and make sure it looks really nice. So now it's time for a time lapse. There, you can see a very distinct difference. This is the side I was, I've was, i ground so far, and this is the side that's been untouched yet, very worn and weathered. This still has, you can kind of see, a little bit of a, a rusty tinge to it. If you want, if you had the, the facilities to actually um, uh, sandblast this, that'd be great. I don't, so what, I'm, what I do is wire brush it, get the worst of it off, and hit it with a rust reformer, and it'll be fine. So I'll, I'll move on to this side, get this side done, and then I will start putting my primer on it. Welcome to Pandora. 
There, it's all wire brushed. It's not focusing for some reason. There we go. It's all wire brushed and ready to roll. And if I'm honest, I almost want to just polish this up, make it look real good, and clear coat it. I don't even want to paint it. That looks kind of cool, that rusty look. But you can see now, now that I've polished on it, or now that I've brushed it, you can see maybe some of the pitting in it. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. You can see that it, if, yeah. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's very pitted. It's gonna need a lot of, a fair amount anyway of body work yet. But, I might not even bother with it. Cause that does look pretty sharp, if I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I almost want to take that and just polish that, maybe sand it a little bit, make it look kind of... Because right now it has, like, you can see where I was wire brushing, and it'd be kind of cool to just kind of rub, polish that up and just hit it with a clear coat. Paint this. So for now I'm going to move on to the bottom. I'm going to take this off so I can wire brush properly, and, and then wire brush this whole thing. Now you all can't see it, but it's starting to get a little cloudy in here and I'm going to have to go out soon and get some fresh air. But I have to go in some of the finer spots that I couldn't get with my big tool. I have to go in and get them by hand with this wire brush. So I'm going to be doing that for a couple minutes. Okay, 
That's as much as I can get by hand for now. I wish I could sandblast it, but I don't have the facilities or the capabilities for doing that at all. So I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum uh, rust reformer. So what this does is it bonds with the rust and turns it into paint or metal, I'm not sure which. But it, it turns any rust into a paintable surface. So, what it's got going here, it's going to turn into a paint. Well, there it is. It looks a lot worse than the camera. It looks very spotty in the camera. It's not. It's way better. It doesn't. But there you go. And this stuff does work, by the way. I used this and then had to take it off again. Used the, the brush there to take it off. And it went, took the paint right off, and it was just clean metal underneath. All the rust was gone. So this stuff is very effective. So now what, we, what I'm going to do, I've got this got it on there now. I'm going to let it dry, let it sit for a while, and then we'll hit it with a primer, and then our final undercoat, which will be a heat, a very heat resistant, a heat, uh, yeah, high heat paint. It's a black paint. As for the front side, I'm not sure if I'll leave that or if I'll paint that. Because if I'm honest with myself, That looks good. That that look that looks really really cool. I might just sand it real well and clear coat it, seal it in real well, and <laughs> roll with it like that. Cause I like that. I like that a lot. But for now, I'm letting the other side dry because I don't even have paint for this front side. So this is all I had, and I'm out now. So uh, I have to get more paint stuff, and we'll see you in a yeah yeah next clip. So it's been about a day now. Uh, I went and I got high heat paint, which, in all perfect honestness, oh, what to do with that? It's it's a little bit overkill, um, but the paint I used in the engine bay did peel. So I don't know if it was from the heater if I hadn't prepped right. But I'm gonna run. I'm gonna throw this on it. Rust-Oleum high heat. It's good for 1,200 degrees. My engine never reads anywhere near that. So I'll spray the backside with it. And now it looks so good. So I'm actually going to leave it like this. I'm actually going to leave it this rusty, this rusty look here. I'm going to hit it with, and I'll show you how to do that. You don't clear coat stuff like this. You do boiled linseed oil with a little bit of mineral spirits. So I need to paint this. There's a trim piece here you can kind of see. That's going to get painted gloss black to match the grill. Or I might do it chrome. I can't quite decide, but I'm going to tape it off and um, prime it at least tonight. And then this I'll get later. There, I've got it all taped off. I hit it with a light grit sandpaper 
kind of scuff it up so the paint would adhere a little better. I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum's uh, primer. It's just a, a gray primer. So when you're so so when you're painting here, you need to can't get the lid off. Hang on. So when you're painting, you want to take it easy. You want to give, you're going to want to do as far as you can. So you're going to want to start here, paint the whole way across, end up over here on the other side. Done. So, and then with spray paint, it's not as, you don't have to be as particular. I still like to do it. I like to do the whole thing, one fell swoop, and then back again. So that is what I'll be doing here. So you start over here. Just a light coat, single coat. Beautiful. Touch up a couple of the other spots, make sure you go decently long. Make sure you got a nice coverage and then once more over the whole thing. You don't want it too thick because it'll run. So now I'll let that dry for a couple hours. And then I'll come back over it with the gloss black. And it should mold right into the grill. Or I might do a chrome. It'd be kind of cool to have a chrome strip across the top. Still have to do still baiting on that. But when you see me again, I'll be either holding black paint or chrome paint. One of the two. I'm going with black. I went with black. I already painted it. You can see. You can see there. Nice black stripe. That way it'll blend in with my black grill here really well. This is all painted black. You can see the old piece is actually falling off on the old one. So. So I've got two bolts and two bolts. Let's just uh, doing this with one hand is not working. There we go. All right, so I got to take two bolts out, and then I can switch over. Won't be hard at all. All right, I got it back on. Da, 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 da. Looks good. That looks good. <laughs> Look at that. Matches up real nice. Oh, that's clean. And yeah, so I've decided not to paint it. But you don't do clear coat either. What you do, wait a sec. So I got this ingredients list from uh, Broke Bastard Garage. I'll link him down below. I can't take credit for it. So you need a 16 ounce container. This one's 22, so I'm only gonna put 16 ounces in. So first of all, you have mineral spirits. So you need three quarter cup. If I can figure out how to open it, let's see. So, 
about three quarter cup of the mineral spirits. Shut that away. That would made a terrible mess. And now, come on. This container is brand new. Ah, uh, you can smell it. Okay, I'll put that in the trash. Right there, it's about 16 ounces. And put it in a resealable container because this is going to last you for a while. Stir it up, shake it up, mix it up, however you want to do it. And now I need, I need my rag, one second. So, get a clean rag. You take this. Now that it's mixed, take it. And just rub this into your, your hood. Or whatever body panel it is that you're keeping uh, rusty. rusty. But there it is, and it's staying like that, and I like it. It looks really, really good. If you look closely, you can see there's a layer of linseed oil on it, and it just looks, <laughs> that looks so good. Hold it, that looks really good. I'm gonna be painting this a nice, so some sort of metallic blue in the future. I'll make it, I'll make this, the blue is all going to get painted and look nice. The hood is going to stay like that. Just a callback to remember that this truck was once kind of a rust trap. It was a heap. It has a dent here. It's got a little dent there and I noticed right here, you can kind of see a dent. But look at that. That's neat. That looks real nice. I like it. It looks a sight better than the old hood did. This is what you want to do. Never clear coat. Always linseed oil on your bare metal. That's all from me, folks. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Hit like and I will see you next time.